So yesterday, while making a video looking at the new leaked screenshots from Star Wars 1313, I stumbled across something really interesting to do with Jedi Fallen Order. In the early stages of Jedi Fallen Order's design, before the full dev team was even put together, lots of concept art was created to get an idea of where they wanted to take the game and how they wanted it to look. And I just came across a gold mine of Fallen Order concept art, all stuff I've never seen before, designed by the illustrator Gus Mendonca. Most of this wasn't in the Jedi Fallen Order art book. It's even earlier concept designs than what you see in that, most created back in 2016 before Battlefront 2 had even been released. So there's a lot to go over here, designs that helped shape this game's story and characters. I always love going back to a game's origins and discovering the journey it went on, the different ideas it went through before the final game was fully realized. There's definitely going to be some stuff in here I think you'll be interested in seeing, including Cal's origins the droid companion, the lightsaber design and customization, the second sister, the planets of Jedi Fallen Order, and more. Let's do this! So I don't know if you guys can hear this, but there's someone in the room above me doing work with a hammer, and it's really loud, so hopefully that doesn't get picked up on the voice recording. Hey everyone, it's Andrew! <laughs> so first up, I want to take a look at some of the early character designs for Cal. He actually looked quite different early on to what he was in the final game. One of the original names for this character was Cal Castus instead of Kestus, spelled with an A and 7 E, and also Boon Castus. Early on here, you can see the poncho Cal ends up wearing, along with the different colors and customization options. I think these early concept designs present a much grittier looking world and character than what we ended up with in Fallen Order. We got a little bit of a tamer version of this. And Cal's original weapon and lightsaber design here are quite different to what he has in the final game. Cal carries a staff similar to the one used by Rey in the sequel trilogy. The end design of Rey's staff actually ends up looking really similar to her lightsaber at the end of Rise of Skywalker. Rey actually disassembled the staff to build her own lightsaber saber and I'm getting those vibes here. This Jedi Fallen Order concept design saber would be removed from the staff by twisting the saber out. So you twist it off and it comes out. It's kind of like drawing a sword from its sheath. And this also reminds me a lot of Chirrut's staff from Rogue One. I'm not sure about you guys, but towards the end of the movie, I was expecting him to draw a lightsaber out of the staff when they're all fighting on Scarif. I'm not sure if that was in the early scripts and story for Rogue One. I was hoping he'd have a lightsaber. I was a little bit disappointed when it didn't happen. Happen, but apparently Chirrut actually has a kyber crystal sliver in one end of the staff and this allowed Chirrut to better understand where the end of the staff was by listening to the sound of the battery and crystal. I am one with the force and the force is with me. You can also see here in its early days they were playing around with the idea of a yellow or orange bladed lightsaber. And this is before these colors were actually canon. Jedi Fallen Order made these colors canon and then of course Rise of Skywalker at the end, no spoilers, but you know what happens. General Grievous goes and digs up all the lightsabers, that's what happens. There was also an idea that Cal would originally carry a knife. Although I like this idea, especially considering when Jedi Fallen Order takes place in the Star Wars timeline, it's a very dark time following the fall of the Republic. Cal is literally on the run trying to survive, so him having a knife makes sense, but it doesn't really fit with the heroic Jedi theme. Knives are generally dirtier weapons, and I can't imagine Cal stabbing someone with one of these. It's just, it just doesn't fit his character. I think following the idea of Cal carrying a staff with a hidden lightsaber eventually evolved into the idea of the double bladed saber. Perhaps this was something that needed clearance from Lucasfilm before these concepts could be further developed. We can see here some of the early concepts of the double blade and they were also playing around with the idea of the lightsaber having a side handle which could be attached to the hilt. Perhaps this was part of the early days of lightsaber customization design they were thinking of for this game. Game. This would have definitely changed the combat system even further, perhaps adding another lightsaber fighting style in addition to single blade, double blade, and the dual wield attacks. And I think even in some of these early concept images, you can start to see Cal's original lightsaber hilt taking shape, or rather Jaro to Pal's hilt. A few other things to point out in these images, Cal here also appears to be a bit older than the Cal portrayed in Fallen Order. He has different hair, along with what appear to be some tattoo markings on his face and 
head. And something else that's really interesting about these early concepts is how the companion droid is portrayed. The droid we of course now know as BD-1. What you see here I think is a lot more similar to the ID-10 Seeker droid used by Iden Versio in Battlefront 2. I think it's much closer to this than what BD-1 would eventually become. Early designs of BD-1 had the droid attaching to armor plating on Cal's shoulder. The droid would fit into this and this is somewhat similar to how BD-1 ended up traveling around with Cal. Instead he just hangs onto Cal's back strap. And the initial idea of Jedi Fallen Order's main character having a companion droid is actually an idea that was first proposed by Gus Mendoka. In his first meeting with Respawn he suggested the idea that Cal should have a pet droid companion along with the idea that Cal should be a ship breaker working at a remote location in the galaxy which eventually became Raka and the Scrapper Guild. This is actually inspired by images of workers dismantling massive oil tankers in India's Bay of Bengal. The droid also had a few different prototypes. I like this one with the blast shield, which would be used to convey more emotion as it moves up and down. It's pretty cool. And there are also designs that enable the droid to fly, have legs, and also wheel tread so it could roll around the ground. I really like the idea of the droid being a shoulder attachment. There was also a light bar which showed you the droid droid's mood and also how much boost and jetpack it had left. This would be visible to the player. I guess they kind of stuck with that in terms of a health display which can be seen on BD-1's backlight. And here we also have a few early designs for the second sister. This is Inquisitor Mag Zaroff, one of the initial designs for the second sister or for the game's main antagonist. This version of the second sister was eventually evolved and parts for her design were used for Meryn, but as a concept character her armor and and materials were quite advanced, quite well developed. Mag Zaroff's gauntlets are equipped with conductor contact veins, capable of absorbing the impact of laser blasts and lightsaber strikes. This technology is similar to the riot batons used by the First Order Stormtroopers and the electro staves used by Magna Guards. So she could basically block lightsaber attacks with her arms. And her hands here actually look similar to Starkiller's Sith Stalker armor. She has razor sharp metallic claws, as well as metal spikes on her boots for both climbing and attacking enemies. The idea here was that this Inquisitor would be capable of fighting even without her lightsaber. She sounds almost too deadly to be a real character. And next, I'd like to take a look at some of the world designs for Jedi Fallen Order's planets. You can see some of the bigger structures in their early stages here, some of the temples and other locations you visit in the game. We have an early concept of what looks like Bagano, some images depicting a very open and flat landscape with the giant temple, whereas others are more intricate with cracks in the planet's surface and having to jump over these as a part of the game. Some of the other images look like the early stages of Zepho with its large snow-topped mountains, and also Ilum with depictions of the entrance to the Jedi Temple. And there's an illustration of Cal on Tatooine, which is interesting because obviously Tatooine isn't in the game, so was this a planet the writers and developers were considering Cal could visit during the story? But looking at all of these, I think you can see the main theme here is the Lone Wanderer, exploring these planets. This game set out to be focused on exploration and the Jedi path. And I'm getting vibes of the man with no name here, especially wearing the poncho, the good and the bad and the ugly, those old films. You can see influence of those here. I really love looking back and talking about the what if of video games. Obviously games go through so many different designs and ideas in their early stages, and I think it's interesting to observe the journey a game goes on, experience its path, the decisions that were made, and the ideas that weren't followed through with. I can imagine it must be so hard at the start of one of these projects, having so many artists giving you concepts and designs, and the developers and Lucasfilm having to pick and choose the best to build a story. And just to think that everything you saw today and everything you see in Jedi Fallen Order would have not only gone through Lucasfilm, but also Disney and EA Respawn. Long process to get these designs approved. And so now that you've seen all this, I'd love to know if you would have liked this game to go in a different direction visually. Are there some concepts here or different designs that you think you would have preferred over the final product of Jedi Fallen Order? Which version of Cal and BD-1 do you like better? What do you think of the planets? What do you think of this second sister? Let me know in the comments. And if you've been watching the channel, you probably know I've been going through and finding lots of Jedi Fallen Order hidden details and Easter eggs. The maps are so big and detailed that there's still some stuff I haven't seen and haven't discovered yet. And I've also been going outside the map boundaries to see if I can find
find some hidden details off in the distance where you don't normally look. The other day I went and looked at the outside of the Fortress Inquisitorius and discovered that once you get past the underwater section, the fortress itself isn't actually underwater. If you want to see more of that, you can watch this video here. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord for lots more Star Wars gaming, news, details about Star Wars games, concept art, maybe I'll share some of that, and more. Come join my Discord community, it's going really strong. I love seeing all of you guys hang out and talk on there, talking about Star Wars and games and everything. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew, I'll catch you soon. Hopefully the hammering stops soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.